Hey guys, today, um, before I ever start doing um, actual drawing videos, I want to talk about my essential art supplies. Um, this is for drawing, specifically graphite drawing. And these are the things that um, every time I sit down and draw, this is what I use. And um, they are definitely my essentials. I have more than this, but we are in the middle of a move, so I've packed everything away. But I did have um, one commission piece that I still had to do, and so I just um, kept these essential things out. Um, and so I'm just going to go over this. First, this is my case. Um, and I have, I cannot tell you where this came from. It was actually a gift from my dad. <clears throat> and it's probably from, it's probably from Michael's. It says E-W-E. -E. I don't even know what that is. Um, but this is what it looks like. And, um, it's got two zippers and they do lock into place. So that's nice. Um, so they're not, you know, coming open on you. And in my first zipper, I've got my graphite pencils. I do not use charcoal or ebony or anything like that. I use straight up graphite. Um, there are some really talented people out there who can use charcoal. Um, but for me, it just smears everywhere. I cannot get it. Um, anyways, so I use graphite. That's what I've always used. Um, I currently am using uh, Prismacolor Turquoise, and um, I used to use, let me see, I used to use Statler, and um, Statler is a really good brand um, if you're just starting out with drawing, but one thing that I noticed is that there was a lot of those, like, um, I don't even know what they're called. It's like little crunchy things in the um, lead itself. And um, after a while, that got really annoying, um, especially like if you're drawing um, like a portrait or something and you come across one of those little crunchy things in the lead and then all of a sudden you've got a spot. Um, and so I switched to Prismacolor Turquoise. And, um, they so far have not done that on me, except for, um, this morning, my F did that. And that was the first time it's ever done that. And I've heard other people talking about, um, that they've had the little crunchy things in there. But uh, so far, I mean, I've got an entire set here. I've got it from 6H to 9B. I actually have an 8H as well, but I haven't used it. Um, but, I mean, in, in all of them in between, in the F is the only one that has done that to me so far. Uh, so, uh, hey, that's a hooray right there. Um, they are a little bit more expensive than the Statlers, but um, you really don't even need a whole set. You can even, I've done this before where I've just gone to my local um, art supply store and ordered... Um, a pencil at a time. Like here's one that I ordered. This is a B, and it's just one that I ordered, and I paid like a dollar something for it. And so really, you can just get like a couple essential, like maybe five, um, and you're only going to pay a couple bucks for them. Um, so anyways, that's what I use, Prismacolor Turquoise, and that's what I've got in here. And then what I really like about this case in particular is um, you can even store things in the, in the middle of it. So I've got my blending sticks. This is um, a really small one. It's really tight rolled. But then I also have um, the larger ones that are loosely rolled. Um, so I have these. And I will talk a little bit more about these in a little bit. Um, I also have this guy right here if you don't know what this guy is uh you're missing out this is the world's best eraser um it's the artist's best friend i think um these are so cheap they're a couple bucks for one they last forever unless you like drop it on the floor and get crap in it uh try not to do that but 
this is the best thing. Um, I always have a stash of these right now. I only have the, the one. Um, like I said, everything else is packed away. And back here, this is a mess because this is where I've been keeping all of my, um, you know, tools, actual tools. But let me go through and show you. Let me just. Okay. Um, my essential tools are gummy eraser, um, blending sticks. This guy right here is called a tough stuff. Um, eraser stick by Papermate. You cannot like go to Walmart and pick this up. You would have to go to a local um, art supply store. Um, Hobby Lobby doesn't even have it. Michaels might. Um, Joann's, I doubt it. Um, but I just went to my local art supply store and um, they had it there. They also had the refills. Tough stuff is the best for this because I've had another when I was trying to find this one, I had another um, eraser stick. And when you go to erase, because with these sticks, you're wanting to erase things that are um, really fine, really particular. Um, and the other one that I used, I think I tried two different kinds. And the eraser bent when I went to go erase. Um, and so this one does not do that. It's a really, like when it says tough stuff. Um, they're not joking around. It's a really hard eraser. So that's what I really like about this one. Um, and it was only like $3. Um, next, I have this guy right here. Now, this is not an essential for everybody. If you don't have one of these, you do not have to go out and buy one. I got this as a gift. And um, probably... If I wouldn't have got it as a gift, I would have never bought it. But I do love it. It is an electric eraser stick. Hear that? Um, this thing is great for going through and highlighting in hair, um, in eyes, um, erasing those itty bitty little spots that you need to erase. That even this guy, um, you would have to rub it up and down to get it to erase and this guy you can just and spot on erasing uh, I use this with it this is a tin template and as you can see it's got um, all these little holes and stuff in it so like if I'm needing to erase one little dot say in an eye I can lay this template on um, the eye and just stick my eraser right through it and there you go um, and so I really like this with these I don't really know what their proper name is but with these you really got to be careful because they are super super thin tin and I have sliced my fingers open before using one of these so be careful uh, when you're using that I also have um, in here I've got my refill erasers or my electric eraser um, and then I've got this this thing is awesome um, it looks like so and it is sandpaper and I use it for cleaning off my blending sticks I use it for um, putting a, a point on some of my pencils um, and also for cleaning my erasers where, whether it's this one, see this has got a little bit of black on it. Just get a new piece of sandpaper. There you go. Um, I also use this to put a point on my um, electric eraser here. So all I would do is take it. And now I have a really good point on there. This stuff is great. Um, you don't obviously you don't have to get it in this. You can just have just a piece of sandpaper. Um, but I get it like this. It's pretty cheap. Um, and as they get dirty, you can just yank them off because they're all stapled on here. If you can see that, they're all stapled on here, and there's a whole bunch of sheets on here. But I use them up um, before I rip them off. 
Okay. Um, another thing is this guy right here. This is made by Statler. Um, it's probably a drafting supply, but this is my brush. Um, and I will talk more about this in just a second. Let me show you one thing. Um, when it comes to paper, what I draw on, I do not draw on paper. That's right. I said it. Uh, I don't draw on paper. I used to until um, I had and my art mentor introduced me to this wonderful stuff. Let me get it out. Sorry. Stuff in the bag. Okay. This is illustration board. This is the back of it. Um, um, this is white. It's really smooth. It's probably cold press. Um, and this stuff is so cheap. I get it. Okay, so here, I mean, this thing's huge. Um, I get it in a sheet twice as big. I had them cut this one down so that I could fit it into my van for around $5. Um, and this is what I draw everything on. I do not use paper. Uh, paper to me is too flimsy. Um, it wrinkles. It rips. It gets hurt. There's, um, I think that there's too much grain on a lot of papers. I really don't like a lot of grain. Um, I like my drawings to be smooth, and that is what this illustration board helps me with. Now, there are a whole bunch of different kinds of illustration boards. Some have um, more tooth on it, so that if you like the green, if you like the um, the texture that that paper can give you, you can get it in that, and it's really cheap. I get it, um, and I just cut it down using an X-Acto knife. Usually, a lot of my drawings are I cut down. Um, for my portraits, I cut down to five by sevens um, and eight by tens, and so I'll, the huge sheet can last me just forever. Um, and so that is what I draw on, and that is why I'm such a big fan, and I'm still stuck on blending sticks. A lot of um, I've watched. Gosh, it just seems like everybody um, who has some type of YouTube channel about drawing stuff. It's like everybody's against the blending stick. My gosh. Um, I can understand if you don't know how to use them correctly. And I could probably do a video on how to use these things correctly. Because if you do, they can just be your best friend. Um, but so many people, they don't want to use these in particular. <clears throat> because if you're drawing on paper, they can actually change the consistency of your paper if you are overusing them and vigorously rubbing on them. They can take the tooth of your paper off. Um, and so, yeah, I, I completely get that. But with my illustration board that I draw on, um, it, that doesn't happen at all, um, especially since mine is so smooth. There's hardly any grain to it at all. And so um, that is why I use these things. Other people, um, they do the, uh, oh, let's see. Well, some people use a brush. I know um, some people use a soft brush. Um, that can get expensive if you're looking for the right brush when a pack of these is only a couple of bucks and you get like, I don't know, 10 or more in a pack. Um, I've got them in all different shapes and sizes. Like I said, though, some are packed. So these are just my essentials. I just have one really thin, um, long one and then the slightly bigger side, side and a loose roll with a, with a longer tip on it. These are my essentials. These are what I draw with every time. Um, I also have in here, and this is not an essential, but I I found it on the floor after I packed my bag. <laughs> but it's, I don't even know what it is. It's like a suede, a little piece of suede or something. You can see how I've used it. I have no idea how to clean these things. Don't ask. Um, but this is also something fun. You just take it and just wrap it around your finger. Like so. And you can just blend with with one of these guys. Um, so it's in here by accident. It's not something that I use a lot. Um, but so back to this guy. This guy is um, definitely an essential. Too bad he doesn't fit in my little baggie here. Um, but one of the main things that I see people 
wanting to do, and it's such an amateur mistake, is to blend with your finger. And all I can do is scream in horror of the people who blend their graphite drawings with their fingers. Because let me show you something in an in example. This is why you never blend with your fingers. You never touch your paper. Um, everybody, even if you have like extremely dry hands, I don't know, everybody has oil on their fingers. And so when you, if you're like constantly touching your paper or wiping away, like if you erase something and wipe it away with your hand, you're depositing the oils off of your skin onto your paper. Can this be a problem? Let me show you. I'm just going to take my thumb and I've just got some paper here and I'm just going to kind of, you know, like push around and, okay, there you go. Um, now, let me get, I'll get my, what is this? I'll get my nine so that you can see it. Um, I'm going to just draw right here. Pick up some of the graphite on my blending stick, and now I'm just going to go over. Where I have just touched the paper. This should give me a smooth wash over the paper. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but if you see all of these little, um, if you see all of these little white spots where I have just blended this on, probably can't see it very well because I have my window open, uh, my blinds open right here. Um, those are my fingerprints. <laughs> if you can see it, if you can't, please take my word on it. Those are my fingerprints. And um, don't ever touch your drawing. If you need to wash something away, get in the habit of getting one of these brushes and just go like that. That's, that's all you need. Um, and then, this is the other essential. <clears throat> this is tracing paper. This is what my hand rests on as I'm drawing. So as I am sitting here, my hand never touches this. You should never have charcoal or graphite right here. If you do, that is showing that, yeah, you might be artsy, but you're doing it wrong because you're smearing everything and you're getting all the nasty oils from your hand onto your drawing. So I take um, tracing paper, set it on my drawing, and then I can draw from there. Um, I never, ever, ever sit my skin on my paper. Um, I use tracing paper. You can also use like a Valium or something like that. Um, don't use, I would not recommend just using another piece of paper. Why? Because it's porous and it's textured. And if you set a piece of paper on top of something that you just draw and then you're going to move it around, what's that going to do? It's going to smear everything. Because this paper is just going to pick the graphite right up. Um, and so that's why I use tracing paper with mine. Um, and this guy. And this was hard to kind of get into the, um, you know, habit of wiping it away. But that is what I use. Also, last but not least, home. Cryon, Krylon, yeah, um, workable fixative. Okay, um, this is for pencil, pastel, and chalk drawings. What it's going to do, and I have in a pinch, I have used um, hairspray before, but with hairspray, it can be a little dangerous um, because. Sometimes blotches can come out of there if you're using, you know, just like a cheap air spray. But this is a workable fixative. Um, so uh, when you are done with your drawing, when I'm done with my drawing, 
I spray a layer of this on it and that just sets it. Um, now it is workable which means you can go back and rework it if you need to. Some things are not workable and um, once you spray it on it's permanent and you can't change it. So this is what I use. I really like it. Um, and it's like 12 bucks at Hobby Lobby or something like that. But that is what I use. Um, so I hope you like the video. I hope this helped you out. Um, and maybe you realize that, okay, you've got a little too much going on and there are some things that you can simplify. Uh, so if you like the video, please subscribe and like me down below. And I will see you next time.